cleanup is underway after a big fire in Volusia County. It happened this morning at the Daytona Beach Flea and Farmers Market on Tomoka Farms Road. Tonight, vendors with stalls there are trying to salvage whatever they can. News 6 reporter Vanessa Ariza spoke with some of those vendors. Vanessa, were they able to salvage anything out there? Not really, Ginger. If the fire didn't destroy a lot of things in their unit, the smoke and the water damage definitely did. That makes it very difficult for people here at the flea market to make a living now. This is what's left of one row of vendors merchandise at the Daytona Flea and Farmers Market. Tenant's source of revenue now reduced to either ashes or water and smoke damage. I got a phone call from a friend of mine that works for the market saying that I might want to come out here. The market was on fire on Efro. Karen Miller has been making a living selling at this flea market for close to 30 years. She was fortunate that a majority of her items were not destroyed, but the same can't be said for her neighboring vendors. It's mind boggling. It's just numbing. I just feel so bad for the other vendors that lost everything. Too emotional to talk on camera, this vendor has been here for 25 years. He says the fire started in his booth. A lot of them, that's their only income. The battalion chief tells me the fire started around 9.30 this morning. It took crews about 10 minutes to put it out, but it left 8 to 10 units with heavy fire damage and the remaining with catastrophic water damage. We've been together for many years, you know, so when they hurt, we hurt. When they lose, we lose. So it's, it's been difficult. Now, an official here at the flea market tells me that they will open tomorrow per usual. Now, as far as those tenants who, uh, whose units were damaged, there's no word on when they will be able to get back into their units or, for that matter, when they'll be able to get back into that building. Ginger? Yeah, it's just awful, and thank goodness they're closed on Thursdays, so no one was there. But do the investigators know how or where the fire started? They do. Fortunately, they were able to determine what caused that. The battalion chief told me that when he went in, and according to witnesses' statements in connection to what he saw, it was an overloaded electrical circuit. He said there were a lot of electrical uh, cords that were plugged in there, so that's what they believe uh, caused that fire, Ginger. All right, Vanessa Ariza reporting live for us this evening. Thank you, Vanessa.